Salutations, and welcome aboard my time dirigible. I am Zach Friedman, gentleman voyager of time and space. This whole coronavirus nonsense grows quite tedious, wouldn't you agree? Well, I propose we tune the phlogistoscope to an alternate dimension, one in which this vile virus has yet to proliferate. So, focus your goggles, pour a nip of your favorite absinthe, and enjoy the show. Since there's no particular danger in going outside in 2020, I have been crisscrossing New York City's most tightly packed conferences and successful co-working spaces, building technology wherever it's needed. When the mission is in the field, I have to bring my workshop with me, so I've been refining an all-purpose mobile workshop for nearly a decade, presenting the Void Star Bag. The Void Star Bag is perpetually stocked with a special set of tools and supplies for soldering, debugging, coding, and constructing. And today we're going to turn it inside out. The foundation of any go bag is the bag, and I picked a spicy one. This might look like the kind of backpack your kid carries to school as they get on the bus every morning, but it's not. This is the Chromoto Barrage, a backpack designed for bikers. It's waterproof, it's nearly indestructible, and it has a neat secret feature right here in the front pocket. Let's save that one for later. So let's start in the zip pocket below the roll top. This has my field meter, Fluke 323. When I'm in the field, I'm likely to deal with high voltage AC, so this thing gets permanent residence in this bag. This pocket also holds tools like logic analyzer, bus pirate, JTAG programmer, supplies, and other things I pick based on what I think I'll encounter for that particular project. The bottom of this pocket is coated in powdered Altoids dust, because I once threw a tin of mints in there and I forgot about it for a few months. All chrome bags have waterproof main pockets, uh, and that is a real get a jail free card when there is a moist surprise. These things are seriously waterproof. I've been drenched in countless crazy downpours, and I don't think I've ever seen a drop of water make its way in there. This particular model has a laptop sleeve, but my laptop is just too plump to fit in it. My work machine is a mid-2013 MacBook Pro. This video came out in 2020, the computer is just really, really old. I think the series of MacBook Pros were like the pinnacle of laptop engineering. Uh, they had a great selection of ports, they had a decent keyboard, they had that spiffy MagSafe adapter, and they had giant batteries. Don't laugh at the Mac, uh, it's a Unix machine with a native bash shell, none of that Windows PowerShell garbage or having to compile my own Wi-Fi drivers on Linux. I haven't upgraded it in seven years because it still works fine for laying out boards and writing code. It's not like all my clients dried up and I had to become a full-time YouTuber who edits videos all the time, that would be preposterous. The point is, tools exist to solve problems. Uh, as long as a tool works fine and it solves the problem, I don't even think about replacing it. Nearly everything in this bag is kind of old, it's a little busted, and I'm really proud of that. It means I pick solid stuff and I take care of it. I like my crusty ass gear. I trust it, and we got history. Take my tablet, for instance. This is the Asus T102H, and when I bought it, it was the lightest and cheapest Windows tablet available. See, the MacBook is just too heavy to like cradle in my arm and carry around. So I use this for monitoring serial data, sniffing stuff with a logic analyzer, running wireless tests, etc. It's also nice for... I remember running through apartment buildings with this hacked together XP diagnostic dongle desperately trying to debug a wireless project. And uh, I remember getting more and more excited as I realized I had actually made a connection through five stories of an apartment building. Uh, the screen cracked when this thing fell onto the hard concrete of a boiler room floor, but it still works fine. Wait a sec. Is that the screen protector that's cracked and not the screen itself? One minute. It's alive! Uh, tablet's great, but it's always nice to have a pen and paper around. Uh, this is my Muji notebook, which lacks the pretentious street cred of a moleskin, but it does have engineering-friendly grid paper, and it lays flat. So I talked earlier about the secret feature, and uh, it's time to take a look at that. See, this front panel here isn't an outer pocket. It's a built-in tool roll. Uh, this thing keeps the delicate tools from jingling around, and I can even use this s beaner which doubles as a bottle opener, to hang the bag like a shelf. I fly to hacker cons and hackathons all over the world to I fly to hacker cons and hackathons all over the world to safely meet people face to face in close indoor proximity, and these tools look awfully sus when viewed through an x-ray. 
When I inevitably get stopped in airport security, the rigorously trained TSA agents can snoop to their heart's content without having to pull anything out, so we can move on to the fun part of the pat-down faster. Down here, we have all the soldering stuff, the screwdrivers, precision tools. Uh, up here, uh, we got USB cables, wall warts, ethernet adapter, and uh, also USB serial adapter. I have a 5-volt and a 3-volt FTDI adapter, so I can always plug in. Finally, I have a pair of wired headphones in case there's a crying baby and my Bluetooth headset finally eats shit. Let me, uh, let me show you my Bluetooth headset. This is a Plantronics Voyager Legend. Uh, I use this for audiobooks and podcasts and not talking because the mic doesn't work. Gotta leave one ear open for situational awareness. Uh, this thing has broken at least five times and it's now held together with Zappa Gap, Kapton Tape, and Hope. It's followed me around through every project to the toughest jobs. Oh uh, man, do you have a gadget that you just keep repairing and refuse to let it die? Leave a comment, that shit makes me cry. Let's talk about my mobile soldering setup. When it's time to throw down, I deploy this adorable little soldering stand. I snap the appropriate tip into my Miniware TS-80 soldering iron, and I plug it into this extra thick USB pack. I have a bunch of gimmicky Miniware products like this electric screwdriver, but the TS-80 is the real deal. The USB cable is heat proof, and it also doesn't restrict the movement. Uh, I have snack-sized tubes of lead-free solder and no-wash flux, a spool of solder braid, and a set of ESD-safe tweezers to complete the set. If I need to restrain the victim, this Sharpie is wrapped in blue tape that's great for nailing down boards. Finally, I pack a spudger for spudging purposes. When you're building a kit like this, it's important to pick tools that are a little over-specified because it gives you more flexibility. This battery pack can recharge all of my devices for like days on end in addition to running the soldering iron all day. I want my tools to have redundancy, like these flush cutters can strip wires. Uh, these flush cutters are American-made Crescent brand, the same guys that invented the adjustable Crescent wrench. Along with the flush cutters, I have a pair of Crescent precision needle nose pliers. They have a super slim profile, but they can also withstand a lot of gripping if I have to, you know, unscrew something. This pair of strippers goes from 20 to 30 gauge. I want the strippers to be fine because I can use my Leatherman to strip thicker wires. I do like the slim profile of a fine high-end stripper. The cheap strippers are just awkward and dull and they don't fit very well. Allow me to show you my blades. I have two knives and I bring one or both if I think I'll need it on the job. Uh, this is the Leatherman Surge, which is designed around these replaceable and sharpenable wire cutter and stripper blades. Uh, I've replaced the saw blade with a diamond file, I've replaced the awl with a super stealthy SD card holder, and whenever I travel, I replace the blades with these 3D printed dummies to get through airport security. Uh, I never check my bags, by the way. Have I mentioned that? Uh, it carves at least two hours of air travel off every time. This is my only knife knife, the CRKT Pillar. The finger notch and drop point make this a really precise utility knife, and it's great for opening boxes, ripping cardboard, cleaning 3D prints, and scraping crud. It's probably not a great weapon, but that's fine. I rely on my cybernetically enhanced body to defend myself. <laughs> Going back to the bag, uh, the X-Acto knife is good to have for scraping solder mask, cutting paper, picking off crud, and other delicate tasks that the clunky-ass Leatherman is just too macho for. Fiberglass PCB material is totally abrasive and really hard on knives, so I fitted the X-Acto with this high-quality zirconium blade. I could have just carried around some spare blades instead, but I worry they'll break loose and final destination my ass. The screwdrivers are crap from Harbor Freight, which happens to have a much thinner shaft and finer tip than the higher end drivers. Uh, these screwdrivers aren't full tang, so I can't use them as chisels, but that's just the price you pay to get deep into a Nerf blaster. Last thing in the roll is Dave Jones' EEV blog PCB ruler, which has A, millimeter marks, B, wire gauges, and C, a platypus. Finally, we have some trail rations. It's important to stay well fed and well hydrated in the field because when you're building electronics, everything is gonna go wrong. I stock my bag with Cliff Bars, homemade granola, and other snacks. This is bad snacks you can eat how free, because what costs a dirty As for dihydrogen monoxide, I like this Nalgene water bottle because I can snap it to one of my shoulder strap carabiners so it can't drip on any electronics. Remember, the bag is waterproof in the other direction too, so if this thing sprung a leak in the main compartment, that'd be, it would really suck to be a computer. I also pack a pair of rubber gloves because it's really easy to accidentally touch live wires and get... Oh!
my. It appears that timeline is a touch abbreviated. Well, fear not, for I shall broadcast a new expedition into the majestic world of electromagnetism every single Monday. Pull that notification lever and release the subscription valve to join in wherever and whenever you are. Now I'm afraid we must part company, for I have a time paradox to avert. It seems I've been sighted at a Beanie Babies conference in 1998. Until we meet again, I wish you the very best possible future. So my monocle is a little slippery today, so I've had my lovely assistant glue it down. Behold.